Hey, welcome back. Uh, so this is just going to be a quick summary of feudalism in France. Still a system based off the king at the top, dividing up land and some power among nobles, but it's going to have some differences with England at the time. So where we left off is basically saying that England, because the nobles had a lot more power than what we're used to from what we saw in uh, China, they were able to challenge the power of the king and at least get him to admit that taxes should not be passed without the permission of the nobles. And eventually, get the creation of the parliament, a representative body where nobles could speak their minds. France is one of the only places after the fall of the Roman Empire that actually has some sort of empire. Charlemagne, or Charles the Great, uh, created the Frankish kingdom in the 8th and 9th centuries. But when the last of his Carolingian dynasty dies, Hugh Capet takes over. and He lived in Paris, of course, the modern-day capital of France. The Capetian dynasty is going to start a trend that we're going to see finished later on in France. A lot of the work is done by Philip II, one of the successors of Hugh Cabot. Um, he's very successful militarily, but I think he's most important for the fact that he begins to make the king of France stronger. One of the things that helps with this is the Crusades, which are going to slowly drain the resources of nobles. But the most important thing is that Philip begins to take a lot of the powers away from the nobles during this time period. So instead of having the nobles collect taxes, provide an army for the king, and also enforce the laws, he begins to appoint people as bailiffs. They are not hereditary landowners. They are more like the bureaucracy, the system of government workers that we saw in China, than the system of nobles that we're going to see in England. By granting power to these bailiffs, the nobles are going to have less and less control over the king and less ability to leverage their control over taxation and the military as a way to get what they want. During this time period, we do see the creation of France's parliament. It was called the Estates General. But this parliament is formed more to support the king's policies than to challenge the king's power. Now, bear with me here, because this is really going to become much more important during the French Revolution. The Estates General doesn't meet very often, not nearly as often as the parliament. But when it did, it had three distinct chambers. The first estate represented the clergy um, or church leaders, and it made up a third of the estate. The third estate, uh, sorry, the second estate was made up of nobles or great lords, people who were landowners. And the third and final estate was literally everybody else. And of course, during the French Revolution, the problem is going to be that 97 of the population gets one third of the votes. And the lords and the church leaders always tended to gang up on the rest of the population. At this time, that's not quite as significant because the States General really isn't an independent body. It's a parliament, but it's mainly a parliament in name only. It's designed to reinforce the king's policies, not check his power. So there's a presentation. Hopefully you're able to fill in everything you needed in the notes. Let me know how it goes tonight when you come into class tomorrow and uh, have a good night.